Hi everyone, welcome back to The Colour Cave. It's Gem here and today we are back in the Disney Dreams collection by Thomas Kincaid. Um, I was quite impressed by the response from the last video about whiting out the, the lines with ink. If you haven't seen that video, I am going to link it in the card. It's also in the description and I'll stick it at the end card as well if you want to go and watch it after you have watched this. So back to where we were. I've done a, a teeny weeny bit more since the last video, but not much. So I'm going to carry on today and I wanted to start working on Doc down here. Now he's quite detailed and he's got quite a lot of colour in him so I think this is going to take me a little while. So I thought it would be nice just to have a wee bash at that and uh, have a nice relaxing chat as we always do in these videos. So as you can see I've done a bit of sort of whiting out already and that was just in sort of preparation for getting started with this video. So just a quick nosy over here. You can see that he's he's mostly oranges and yellows and even his skin tone is quite sort of orangey as well. So that's really what I'm going to try and replicate. So um, I might actually periodically, I haven't decided yet, this will be with the joys of editing, but I might pop the reference image up in like the corner of the screen every now and then, or probably this corner would be better, wouldn't it? Just so that you can see as I go along instead of me shifting the paper back and forth when we're zoomed in. Don't want any of you getting seasick. <laughs> So we'll maybe have a bash at that. So uh, yeah, I have uh, I have a few confessions to make this this fine morning or not so fine morning. It's very wet here. I did actually have a completely different video planned for for this slot, but I am just really pushed for time just now. I'm coming into a really busy time with my my work. There is a a disease testing deadline for cattle at the end of October. And that sort of instantly increases my workload. Plus as well, it's harvest time here. So things are just a bit crazy. And it's much easier and quicker for me to film a colouring chat than what I had planned. So this is what you all are getting. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, uh, it's just I'm trying to be sensible with my time though and manage it properly. And I would rather give you a high quality video than a rushed lesser quality video so I will reschedule what I had planned for another another time the other thing as well is and uh, shh, don't tell anybody I'm still in my pajamas it's uh, quarter past 10 in the morning and I am still in my pajamas and that literally never happens with me ever um but I uh, I had been doing some housework this morning and I thought, well, I'll just I'll get this video filmed and then it's done and then I can go and get in the shower and, you know, make myself a bit more presentable. But y'all can't see me in my pajamas anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> oh goodness me, the things we do. Does anybody else stay in their pajamas to do housework? Is that just me that does that? <laughs> I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I just don't see the point in getting showered and dressed and putting on good clothes to you know to do housework. I just uh, it seems a bit pointless to me. I don't know, maybe I'm a minority on that one. So, yeah. The um the other thing that happened recently, that's a bit disappointing is that my my mother and I never made it up in our balloon ride. The weather was not kind to us and it was cancelled. And they are really far behind and getting people up. They've had to reschedule so many because of the weather, because the weather has been so changeable. And uh, we've had to rebook it for the beginning of September. So no joy there. Mama Gem was a wee bit disappointed, but we, we will get there. We'll get there eventually. It's just gonna take a bit of time. Right, so I need to get some red out. The, cl the more closely I look at this picture, the more I realize how many colors that Thomas Kincaid has actually used in his in his painting like even in doc's hat here it's just insane the amount of you know different sort of brush strokes and lines that he's used and there's lots of them and i'm trying i mean i'm trying to go as carefully as i can here and replicate it as much as possible but wow he he's uh he certainly not made it uh, made it an easy task put it that way so again, there's lots of sort of highlights on this. Obviously, he's getting the reflection from this lantern and I'm going to put them in in gel pen, which is quite ironic considering the last video about, <laughs> about whiting out the lines. But um, it's just, it seems to stand out a little bit better. So that's kind of my uh, my plan there. 
also have my, my mandatory cup of tea. Seeing as we are in the AM. And as most of you know by now, teas, tea is important. <laughs> so speaking of beverages, I was recently given a, a bottle of vodka. And vodka is not something that I drink. Um, but it was a gift from a gentleman that we uh, we did a, f a, f a sort of farm favour for and it's quite common for, for that to happen. It's usually bottles of whiskey and neither myself nor Mr Jim drink whiskey either. Anyway, this bottle of vodka <laughs> is made from milk. It's called Black Cow and it is the weirdest tasting thing I have ever encountered in my life because it's sweet. It is very, very strange. So I had a little go at that, but I wasn't I wasn't overly keen on it, if I'm honest. Okay, so thinking about Doc's skin here, I think I'm going to start with light flesh and just build it up from there because there's patches in his forehead that look really, really pale. Um, So I think I'll just try and build some colour up over the top of it. I'm going to... Hi, Wu. I'm going to have to go easy here with these pencils. Because as I say, this paper doesn't seem to doesn't seem to like the the um, the layering quite so much, but that's okay. We can work around that. So he's got a little bit of orange. So again, I don't know whether I would be better doing this with with gel pens, but I can't help thinking I'm going to end up with an an entire page of of just gel pen. <laughs> My dogs are just not settling today either. They are being a pain. Pip's having one of our, our days where she just wants to cry about everything. Which is, at best, irritating. <laughs> she's now, she's trying to squeeze in under the... Right, in you go then. She's trying to squeeze in under the desk. This is our new favourite spot. She likes to lie down at my feet, but what that means is that it ends up there's no actual room for my feet. I end up sitting out from the desk and I couldn't figure out the other day. I'd been sat in the cave for like most of the day between work and, and YouTube stuff and I couldn't figure out why I had such a sore back and then I realised it's because I was sitting at a stupid angle because of her. Can you hear her? That's her scratching at the carpet trying to make herself a den. Right, that's better. The good thing about it is, though, she doesn't, um, she, oh, she's licking my feet now, oh no, she doesn't bother if you, um, if, you know, if you kind of kick her by accident, she doesn't bother, oh, stop licking my feet, that's disgusting, oh, wow, pets, <laughs> okay, I'm not happy with this at all. I'll put a little bit more orange down. He, he is quite or orange looking. It's actually more of like a, a sort of peachy tone. I do sometimes feel that with these um, these Thomas Kincaid pages that I've kind of bitten off more than I can chew with them. Um, and it's not something that normally, you know, sort of panics me or anything, but it's just, there's, there's so much detail in these and, uh, yeah, it's just a bit, not disconcerting, that's the wrong word, but it's just, it's a little bit more complicated, you know, if you're wanting to get something that's even remotely like what he's actually done in the books. And I think the key is just to take a tiny section at a time like this and just go for it. Oh, these dogs are absolutely unbearable. Jock's now talking to a toy in the corner. You'll probably hear him having a bit of a grumble at it. We're just having one of those days today with the dogs. And I do get days like this. Some days they're really quiet and they're really sort of settled. And then other days they just won't set settle at all and I have a feeling that today is one of those days okay right I am going to I'm actually going to do the gel pen as I go here because, <laughs> because I'm not convinced that this is going to turn out the way I want it to turn out 
So, if, you know, if I can see what it looks like as I go, then I'll probably have a little bit more confidence in it. I think it's important to explain these things and show these things because even for someone like me, I mean, I've been colouring for uh, three and a bit years. And, you know, even things like this, I still find them daunting, but that doesn't mean that I won't do them or I shouldn't do them. So I think it's quite important to, you know, to, to show these things and explain what I'm doing because I know there's a lot of people out there that are, you know, are, that really are kind of, um, you know, not sure about doing stuff like this at all. This is precision colouring, guys. So I will have to go back over that. You can't see it on the monitor yet, but that's actually starting to fade out because it's on top of the pencil. And sometimes gel pen will pick up the pigment underneath. Some of you will notice that. So I will go back over that as I um, as I go along. So I need a yellow gel pen as well. I do have my swatch book here. I'll just zoom out a little bit. And in here, I mean, it's mostly pencils, but I do have my, my gel pens listed as well. Oh, that was convenient. <laughs> So um, the, the closest colour I've got, these are all jelly rolls, um, the closest colour I've got is the jelly roll glaze and the yellow one. So I'm just going to dig that out and use that for my, for the, the sort of yellow coloured highlights. Go. Now before I do this, I always test these gel pens out on a scrap piece of paper just to make sure that the ink's actually flowing. You can see I've been scribbling on this post-it note already. Yeah, that one's good. The The glaze ones tend to, they feel a bit more watery, so they tend to be a bit more free-flowing, as it were. Now, I'm interested to see whether this is going to dry yellow or whether it's just going to be orange, because if not, I might have to get the Posca pens out. It's all very experimental. <laughs> so I've got a bit up there, and then there's white in there. I'm going to wait for that to dry before I put the white in. Mm, okay, this is interesting. I need yellow up here as well. It might work better on the paler colours. Yeah, you can see it's showing up there much better. Okay, this might have to be a bit of a, a bit of toing and froing. I was using the dark red just for these sort of highlights and things. Get his eyebrow back in there. And I'm going to use a tiny micron to put his pupils back in. They're actually not black in the reference image, but I'm not really prepared to put them in with pencil. That's just a silly idea. So, okay, that's not drying very yellow, so I'm going to have to get the Posca pens out. Right, we'll do that in a bit. Can you see why this is getting complicated? Good grief. Get the white gel pen down on his specs. So my estimations were, were absolutely right. This tiny little section is going to take me forever. So I'm glad that that's what I had in my mind. I'm going to have to sharpen this little red pencil up. You know that I was only going to get a really small section done. Because that is very much the case. Oh, yeah, that yellow gel pen is doing the grand sum of sweet FA. His little happy face. Doc's a happy chappy. Now I've faded out the black lines enough here that this dark red pencil is actually covering up the line work even though it's still visible, which is fabulous. So I think this is a method that I'm definitely going to consider using more often for sure because it seems to be quite satisfactory in terms of you know what we're trying to achieve here and do you know I've noticed in my last few videos I have used the word satisfactory far 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 too much <laughs> oh geez I seem to do that though I seem to get pet words and I, I overuse them for a period of time and then I realise that I'm overusing them and then I change to something else. I'm sure you guys now, especially the people that have been subscribed for, you know, a longer time, I'm sure you've probably noticed that by now as well. I do try not to 
overused phrases and things. Uh, I'm, I'm quite conscious of it. I'm quite aware of it. But th there's only only so many ways you can say certain things. And uh, th there are certain, like, pet, not pet peeves, but there's certain phrases that I particularly hate. And I hear them from YouTubers, and I'm like, oh, please stop saying that. One of them is, with that being said, I absolutely detest that. It's just a, such a redundant phrase. Obviously, it's been said because you've just said it. I don't know why that. <laughs> that one just really annoys me. <laughs> okay, Doc's starting to take shape now. Okay, I'm going to dig out a yellow Posca pen now. God, we'll get here with this. We'll get there. <laughs> oh. Okay, despite having a plethora of Posca pens, I only have one sort of primary colour yellow and it is a 3M so I'm hoping that that is going to be fine enough to work in these teeny tiny little spaces. Oh this is a glittery one. <laughs> I don't think we want glittery. Oh jeez. Well actually we could probably get away with glittery because it's a reflection. Wrong pens. Try again. It's just not my day today guys. It's really not. Okay, happy days. Um, okay, the yellow that I have is actually a 1M, which is perfect. So this is going to be much better. I just want to, while we're here, as an aside, seeing as it's kind of one of those videos anyway, I want to show you the difference between these nib sizes for those of you that might be thinking about Poscas. So let me get zoomed out again. This is such a bitty video. There's the 1M and there's the 3M. So it is slightly smaller. Obviously, you're not going to use as much ink paint uh, because it is a finer nib so I think that's why the, the, the size of the barrels are different but if I just take the tops off them and I can show you the, the difference in the nib sizes there isn't a huge amount in it but you can see it's just really the very tip comes to a much more pointier point on the 1M so it's really good for precision work and that is the aim of the game today so again I'm just going to test this out on my right, there we go Right, let's see what we can do here. Oh, that's much better. Much better. I'll zoom this back in in a minute, guys. Bear with me. I have to concentrate as well. <laughs> Concentrating. So he's got a little bit of yellow around there. And a little bit down here. And then there's kind of like, oof. So you can see that sticks out like a sore thumb and that is exactly what we are looking for. So we'll leave that to dry and then I can go back in with my gel pen and add in my uh, my my white bits that I need as well, which is great. A bit more on his skin here. And his tongue's kind of like a pinkier shade, but I think I'm just going to go for red if I'm honest. Yeah, that'll do. I really feel like colouring in Thomas Kincaid's books is, it doesn't feel like a normal colouring experience, but I mean that in a good way. You know, it's much more sort of precise and there's a lot more to it rather than just, you know, okay, fill it, you know, fill in all the spaces between the, between the lines. I really don't feel that way about colouring in his books. And I think it's probably why I've not done a huge amount in them. Because I just feel that it requires a lot more precision and a lot more attention to detail. And that's not a bad thing, I don't think. But it's just not everybody's cup of tea. Now, to be fair, I mean, Doc's not looking like much here. It just looks like a sort of collection of, of blobs right now. But um, when you see it next to the, the reference image, then it's, you know, it's going to make a, a bit more sense, I think. I'm really not happy with this gel pen. Okay, now, now Pip's got the crunchy bone. <laughs> She's escaped from under the desk. <sighs> and people wonder why I drink alcohol. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, I do love my dogs dearly. I do, honestly. <laughs> oh, you're just trying to screw it. Well, you in or out? Make your mind up, dog. Good grief. 
Oh, I'm just like, right, okay, so his beard is actually purples and, mm, purples and blues. So this will be interesting. Now, I think I'm going to go back to the violet colour that I used for the shadow area, see here. Um, And over here, it actually looks like more of a greyish colour over here, but... We shall see. I don't think that this book is the best one to be using for a colouring chat. As I say, I'm like, I'm having to concentrate like crazy. And um, there's not much chatting getting done. But, um... Yeah, I'm quite enjoying this book just now. I'm still really pushed for time and I'm not getting the the time that I would like to, to colour specifically. Um, there's just too much going on everywhere else. But I'm just snatching, you know, the time when I can and really just trying to make the most of it. It's just one of those things when you're busy, well, you know, you're busy, what can you do? Just cover up the edges of his beard here. Get these flecks in. Come on, white gel pen. You can do it. There we go. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Do you ever just get one of those days when it feels like the entire world is against you? <laughs> I am having one of those days today. I really am. Oh dear. I say people wonder why I drink. <laughs> right, that looks okay. I think that's about as close as I'm gonna get, truthfully. His beard looks a bit strange. <laughs> it's like a multicolor swap shop beard. But I think when we put in the rest of the colour roundabout it'll you know it'll look a bit more sensible. She says hopefully. <laughs> Okay, so the, we've got this little bit of his sleeve poking out as well. And we'll just pop that in there. I, I mean, it is literally just like a tiny, tiny bit at a time. And just take each section as it comes. I still see a lot of posts on social media about how people are overwhelmed and you know they uh, there was a lady i don't i don't even know who she is but she actually went and bought a second copy of a coloring book and it was quite an expensive coloring book because she messed up the part of one picture now i know everyone's different but that to me is just absolutely insane like there's just there's just no need for that like really it's just nuts um and it's something that I would just never do. It was a complete waste of money. But she obviously felt that strongly about it that she had to do it. Um, so it, as far as I'm concerned, that you know, you can always try. You can always fix mistakes to a degree, and nothing, nothing is really a mistake. It's just maybe not quite the way you would want it to be. And as an artist, if I restarted everything that didn't turn out the way I hoped it would then I, I would be bankrupt because and I would also never finish a piece sometimes you just have to settle and learn a lesson from things and accept that you know that's the way it is you're not going to do it again because you've learned a, you know you've learned a lesson from it and I just feel that that, that that's the, the best sort of course of action for stuff like that um, I know, as I say, that's just my personal opinion, but to go out and buy an entire new colouring book because you've, you know, you've made a mistake on one page, that just seems a, a little bit extreme to me. So, yeah, I still have to white out these lines. That was a mistake. To take this away. And that is the joys of using light layers. It's getting a wee bit carried away with myself there. I have done this part, so we'll move up to his hand. Yeah, he's starting to look a little bit, uh, a little bit more like, like the the reference page. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> we'll go with that. More of his shirt here. I'll do this, this cuff. Is it a cuff when it's up there? It's not a cuff when it's up the top, is it? No, it is now. Just a sleeve. The word, the word sleeve is fine. This, is this cream? Yeah, it's cream. I always get, well, the Polychromos set of pencils, I don't know why, but I always get the cream and the ivory the wrong way round. And it's really quite easy because the cream's much yellower, yellow-eater, <laughs> than the, than the ivory, but I don't know why. It's just, it's like a mental block I've got with it more than anything else. Um, people get that with spelling words quite a lot. You know, they have like a pet word that they spell wrong. I do it with pencils. <laughs> Now I'm just going to use the light flesh to kind of go over the top of all this and just sort of try and blend that that um, cream. I nearly said ivory again there. And so this is the direct reflection of his little lantern. And then we've got more white going on top and bottom. Yeah, he's used quite a lot of white paint, you know, for for highlights on this. So. We'll just put that on there. And he's got a little bit underneath as well. Okay, getting there. Very, very slowly, but we are getting there. So now I want dark red. I'm actually curious, I mean, sitting watching this, do you guys find this painful to watch? Is it is it really boring? Or are you quite enjoying watching me try and sort of struggle my way through this? It's really important that I get your feedback on stuff like this because I don't want to be putting out videos that are like, you know, that, that you don't want to watch. So if you've got any comments on that, then please feel free. Um, because I don't want to make content that you don't want to watch. But I just thought that this is something a little bit different and I know quite a few of you have watched the the video that I did when I started to white out the lines. So I thought it might be nice to come back in here and just do do a little bit more. But you so say you can let me know in the comments. That's it's absolutely fine. As as you know, I'm not easily offended. As long as you're not being nasty about it, that's absolutely fine. So it helps me out as well. You know, it's a it's a good thing, it's a positive thing to get feedback. Okay, good. That, I mean, this is getting like super, super fiddly in here now. That This part of the lantern's just ridiculous. So I think I'm just gonna do my best here to replicate as much as I can, but I'm not, I'm not gonna split hairs over this too much because it's just too tight a space to be worrying about stuff like this. And there's a lot, again, there's a lot of like white paint strokes over it, so. I don't need to I don't need to agonize over this too much. Really. I'm just going to bring that all the way down because I'll be again I've got to go over this with a bit of um a bit of white gel pen. This lantern's actually different. The one in the reference photo is it looks as if it's curved here. Oh man. <laughs> See, I'm just kind of like doing my best to to replicate without sort of making a an arse of it. <laughs> and then there's some red. I have literally got every red and orange pencil out of this set. Oh, we're doing a Chris Chang on it. <laughs> That's okay though. If anybody missed the last video, if you've uh, if you've never watched any of Chris Chang's video, she's a very talented colorist. Like she's She's like a, a super colouring ninja, but she uses lots of light layers, but she literally does like a layer with a different colour every time. So any time that I uh, I end up using a lot of pencils for something like this, I always say I've Chris Chenged it. <laughs> I mean, literally this tiny little lantern, which is no bigger than the end of my finger. I'm sitting here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pencils. Oh man. But there you go. 
hopefully, hopefully I will be satisfied with the outcome and it will all be worth it. <laughs> Ever hopeful. Okay, right, that looks okay so far. So far, so good. I just want to try and do the rest of Doc's hand and so there's this little bit on this side of the ring as well, which again, is, look how small that is. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. <laughs> and his hand is mostly illuminated. So I think if I put down a layer of the cream first, got it right that time. <laughs> and then go over it with either the light flesh or maybe medium, I think light flesh. Then I'll get somewhere close to the, the colour that's here. Now the tops of his fingers there, I'm not really very happy with the how much the black is showing through, but it's a little bit late in the day to worry about that now. So I'm not entirely sure. I'll just put a little bit of orange over it and try and dull it down a bit more. There we go. And back with yieldy gel pen in there and then this part in here is white. It's actually got a little bit of orange in there but I've got a little bit of yellow around here. And then we've got oodles of white here. Oodles and oodles of white. Yeah, so there's been quite a lot of uh, of stash activity going on. Some of you will see that the, the cave stash is in sort of bumper form this month. There's a lot, a lot of stuff flying about. I have had a few donations from, from you guys, from the viewers, of things that they maybe don't use anymore and they've kindly donated them so that others can can have a have a go if they fancy it. And it's really nice because it obviously it supports it supports us as well and you know by now that the money that comes from the donations if there's anything left after the postage etc i always put that back into the channel and we you know we buy nice things like palette full packs and gouache <laughs> which is the next experiment um so you know it's it's just lovely to have that it really is it's uh, it's quite something so i want to say thank you again to to those of you who have uh, sent me things but what it's resulted in, I have had this massive influx of stuff from you lot and I am, I mean, I'm not complaining at all. It's so generous of you and it's just, it's really nice, guys. It really, really is. It's just resulted in a sort of pile up of things for me and I will get around to them. People who have sent me things, I will make videos with them and I have a list of everything that I have been sent and who has sent it and that, you know, I will make videos on them. So please don't think I'm ignoring you. Or, you know, deciding that I'm not using it. I will use the stuff, but it's just, it's just time. I have to be really careful. And unfortunately, I don't have the time to put out more than two videos a week. So, they're, 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 they're on the list, I promise. But it's really nice. And I'm really desperate, especially some of the colouring books that you guys have been sending. I, I would love to colour in, like, all of them. But I just, I, I really can't find the time just now. I'm behind with my Johanna Basford book, which, as I've said already, I want that finished by the end of the year. And I really want to sit down and colour in all these other books, but I have to be sensible. And I will eventually. I will get around to it eventually. It's just not right now. Once harvest is over and I'm by with the busy period at my own work, then it's something that I can revisit. And we can have a have a go again. Right. I'm just going to put a really light coat over his belt. Like over the whole thing. Because it's all the one colour. It's quite a dark colour. So covering up these lines isn't as imperative as in some of the other areas. We'll just get that in there. This has been a great little paintbrush. This was, it came in a set. It's a Royal and Lang Nickel. Uh, it's one of these soft grip ones. And it's a, it's a number one round. But it just seems to be... A really good size for this. I see it came in a pack and it was dirt cheap. I did not pay a lot of money for this. So. Looks as if Doc's wearing a dress. Oh, wait a minute. All the dwarfs look as if they're wearing a dress. Oh, no. Grumpy's got some uh, Grumpy's got some trousers on in this one. But Doc doesn't look as if he's wearing any trousers. <laughs> look at me. No trousers. Okay, we'll give that a minute to dry. Oh, this is part of his... His outfit as well. Oh my. 
I'm a bit happier with how that lantern's looking. I think I'm going to go back over my gel pen again, though. And Doc's legs almost disappeared in under here as well. That to dry a little bit. Okay, I'm a bit happier with how his face looks. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Right, I'm going to jump back when this is dry. I'll be back in a few minutes, guys. Okay, so after a slight intermission, I can work on Doc's arm now because we are... Um, we are slightly drier than we were. I'm having a bit of a, a bit of a stress issue here with the the state of the desk in the cave because it is an absolute bomb site. There's pens and pencils everywhere. Um, yeah, <laughs> it'll be okay. It'll be fine. I'll get cleared up and get everything edited. And I think I'm gonna have to go for a shower and get out my pajamas first before I do that though. I don't know if you ever get that way, but when you've been in your pyjamas for far too long, you start to feel a bit kind of like icky. <laughs> I certainly get that feeling and I'm starting to kind of feel that way now. So I do think I will be, um, I will be going for a shower before I, before I do any more <laughs> after I've finished filming. The lengths I go to for you guys. <laughs> I'm sure you all appreciate it though, don't you? Yeah. Right, so let's get this skin toned down. I'm finding that the mixture of the light flesh and the medium flesh, and these are both polychromos pencils, seems to be a reasonable match. I could probably spend a bit longer blending colours and mixing them and layering them, but this tiny little section is taking me long enough as it is, and I'm, there's only so much time I'm willing to invest in things like this at the sacrifice of, you know, the actual colour match to the, to the reference image. So I'm just trying to kind of find a balance between those two things and I've just kind of settled on this, this mixture. So there's this little arm and again we've got this sort of purple shadow again underneath which is quite nice, I quite like it. And I'm just, I'm going quite lightly here but I can build it up as I go, make it a bit more, a bit more obvious. It makes me wonder, you know, doing so stuff like this, I wonder how long it actually took um, him to, to paint these pictures. It must have taken forever. You know, this, this isn't like a two second job. See how dry his belly is. I love Doc's belly, it's like my favourite. And I'm trying to pick out what might be the best colour. I think I'm going to go back to this sanguine again. And again, this side is going to be mostly gel pen and that yellow Posca pen that I was using. So I'm just really sort of slapping this down as a base color. Just wang it down. And then there's a good bit of shadowing and thing in between his fingers so we can deal with that as we go along. Get that belly covered up. <laughs> he has, he's got, he's got a big jolly tummy, hasn't he? And then we're into kind of like the darker colours. So I've been using the the darker red, the, the, yeah, it's called dark red, just over the top of this, because it see again, it just seems to be the right sort of mixture. And just by alternating the layers, that seems to be quite helpful. It does take a while when you're using that many different pencils, though it does take a while for it to sort of come together and make sense in terms of where your shadows and everything is because for a while it, ju it just looks like a mishmash of pencils it really doesn't look like much but so just with a little bit of experimenting and you know going sort of not safely but just taking your time and keeping those layers light if you do find that you've picked the wrong color it's just a little bit easier to rectify if you find that you're you're way off and colour matching is a really good exercise in itself. Um, generally speaking, I know again as colourists we don't do it very often, but if you get inspiration from, you know, like a flower or plumage on a bird or something, if your eye is in and your colour matching is good, then you're going to be a lot more satisfied with your, with your results when you apply them to, you know, any sort of colouring page, regardless of where the the palette actually comes from initially so this in itself aside from you know being quite satisfied there's that word again <laughs> with the outcome uh, I do find it's a really good lesson in 
just generally helps your, your colouring a lot better. Now again in the reference image it looks like he's got buttons which just aren't here on the line work so we can try and add them in with our yellow Posca pen I feel. I'm back to, for the shadows here I'm using Kaput Mortem. And again we've got a bit of purple about here. Okay, so let's go with the yellow Posca first. Give it a shake. And it seems to be he has buttons here and here. If they're not there, that's where they are now. <laughs> Once again, just a bit of artistic license, you know. And he's got a little yellow bit here. We'll leave that to dry and I can add in the shadow for the buttons in due course. So moving on to his belt, I think I'm going to have to deepen this down, but I'll, I'll get the belt in first because that will give me a better gauge of like the contrast between the two. So I'm just going to go straight Kaput Mortem here. I think this actually needs to be, it does need to be darker than that, but I'll put this down just now. I can barely see his belt buckle as well, it's kind of disappeared. That is the danger of when you're whiting out your your lines like that you know you can end up sort of obliterating them and then you're kind of putting yourself in a position whereby you're struggling to to figure out what you've actually done so that is a fine a fine balance between the two but again i think it's just one of those things that if you practice a little bit you'll you'll kind of get there with it i keep saying just going back to the 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 conversation about the trepidation of starting a colouring page at the end of the day nobody has to see these apart from you no there's no rule that says you has to have to share them on social media or show them to your family or anything like that so you know don't get don't get too hung up on it just enjoy it and you know have a bit of fun i've realized i've not finished off the orange in between here as well i think i was maybe waiting until i had done the gel pen to see how much of it was going to be was going to be covered up so I think I'm going to use, I'm going to go back to the yellow gel, gel pen, which was the, the jelly roll glaze. And I'm just going to pop in some of these in here. Now they're not in there in the reference image, but I'm, I'm making it so. I am making it so. Give it a waft. Right, so we can start down here now on the bottom part of his, his ta tabard. Tunic. Tunic is the word. And again, it's just the same thing as before. There's like a gajillion colours in this, so I'm just going to pop down the sanguine and then I can go from there. Make it pretty. I'll deal with his belt buckle in a minute. <laughs> I'll deal with it later. So, yeah. Put orange down here. And we're going into this darker red again. So this coming weekend, I am doing one of the most exciting things in the world. You will not believe me. I am going to steam my carpets. <laughs> we, um, in the cave, it is, a, it is a carpet in here. I would have much preferred a hard floor for obvious reasons, for arting and one thing and another. But um to take it up is just that is absolutely pointless because it's the same carpet that runs through the entire like downstairs area where the cave is so i was just like no we'll just leave it as it is but what happens is because i spend an absolutely insane amount of hours in here the the dogs are all in here with me most of the time and when you come into the cave now it smells suspiciously doggy so i think it's time that the carpets were cleaned so that is this coming weekend's endeavor and i'm not looking forward to it at all i'm really really not i love my dogs dearly but there's things like that it's just it's just not fun there's nothing fun about steaming carpets especially when you know they're going to be absolutely manky <laughs> So please uh, spare a thought for me this weekend when I'm trundling up and down through the entire house. 
with my carpet steamer <laughs> trying to make everything smell better it, it does make the house smell a lot better generally um we do we keep kind of like soft furnishings for the dogs to a minimum jock has a, a skin condition he has quite itchy skin and he's had it for many many years and unfortunately it's not one thing that triggers it it's it's multiple factors so we we try and do everything we can and one of the major um, aggravators is dust and obviously nearly every soft furnishing which includes carpets beds you name it all make him itchier so we we do keep everything clean like all of the the dog's beds they, they they're like their blankets are washed like twice a week and we make sure that we keep up with hoovering and you know all that kind of thing to try and minimize it for him so the carpets is really something that it should probably be done more often than it is done but it's quite a big task so but there comes a time and it is that time poor boy right i think my posca's about dry there so i'm just going to go in with my kaput mortem and my dark red if i can find it there it's there and i'm just going to try and get a little bit of uh, some shadow and definition around these to make them look a little bit more like buttons there we go and then i'll just pop in a little bit of this around here just well Do they look like buttons? Yeah. Yeah, that looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll go with that. I don't there's actually more of a shadow trailing off them, but I think they won't look like buttons anymore, so I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna skip that. <laughs> know my limitations. This is quite dark under here as well. I'm gonna build up the colour here a bit more because it does look a bit sort of wishy washy. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over with the sanguine again. I'm going to try not to blend in those shadows that I've just put in with the buttons. I want them quite defined. There we go, that's looking better already. Doc's looking all right. Okay, put more colour down here as well. Yeah, that looks better. Right, it's time for a little bit more gel pen. And after that, I am going to call it quits here because that must be nearly an hour. I have filmed this video in fragments because I stopped to let the, 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 the ink dry and stuff. Um, but I would imagine we'll be nearly an hour now. As uh, Mr. Jem would say, we'll call it a do at that. <laughs> Now he's got little highlights on the ends of his fingers here. Pop them in. I'm just trying to see if I've missed anything. I think that's it. Right, we'll have a zoom out and look at the bigger picture now and just see how close, you know, side by side and from a distance that we actually are. I'm quite satisfied with that though overall. I think that's about as close as I'm going to get. Try and get these both in shot for you. What do you think? Do you think that's a reasonable effort? I have lost some of the shadows in his skin tone and his face, and I think probably his hat could be a little bit darker. But generally, you can see even this background here. My image is a lot lighter, and it's it's actually a habit rather than anything else. But I tend to favour lighter colours. It's the same when I'm colouring backgrounds and things, and anything I do tends to be lighter than what I originally imagined. And it's something that I'm actually working on generally with my art is to be a bit braver and use like a shade or two darker than what I would have in my head and it's back to that conversation about colour matching but I fully expected that to happen with this and it's just it must just be the way I translate what I see with my eye to my brain but everything I do is usually a little bit lighter but I am I'm quite satisfied with that I think that's a reasonable effort under the circumstances but this is another thing people don't appreciate how much time these things take I've just spent an hour literally on that sort of like two inch square section of a colouring page which is just nuts but I'm satisfied with the way it's come out 
and generally I think that we're going to get on quite well with this picture because it's it's starting to sort of because I've got that one corner done it's starting to come together a little bit and that's what colouring is all about it's about being satisfied with what you're doing it's not what other people think and it's certainly not for other people to judge unless you specifically ask for it so anyway I'm going to leave it there guys thank you very much for taking the time and coming and hanging out with me and you know having hopefully you've had a relaxing time as well if you have any comments on what I've done or anything you want to add please feel free down in the comments section you know that I always welcome your comments and I am going to go for a shower <laughs> so we'll see you guys back in the cave for the next video I hope you have a good day everyone bye for now